A rare astronomical event is occurring in the next weeks or months and I would suggest not to miss it and what is it and where it is, well let's find out in today's video. Hi everybody, Thomas here from my channel Astronize and today we are going to talk about a star called T Corona Borealis, also called as the Blaze Star. And the Blaze Star is a star in the night sky that is mostly all the time quite invisible to the naked eye so we cannot really see it maybe if you have a very powerful telescope you may see it but the thing is in the in the last centuries we observed that the star is getting at some point very very bright and then also fainting away yeah and this happens quite um, regularly so the last time was I think in the 1940s or so and it is assumed that the brightness will increase in the next weeks and months, so I would suggest not to miss it because this very faint star is increasing its um, its, its limitation properties by, by several factors becoming visible. So you have like, if you know the night sky like for now, where you don't see the star, remember it, make maybe a picture of it, and then maybe in a few weeks or months you will see then a very bright dot and it's quite fascinating to see that the night sky is not as static as it always appears to be. Now, what is the blaze star? And to talk about the effects that cause this bright illumination, I would suggest not to talk too deeply about um, science stuff or astrophysics, but really take this um, artistic impression of something called a binary system. Now, on the right side, you see as something called a red giant. This is like a very big star with a lot of gas and so on, very bloated. And on the very left, you see a white dwarf, a very compressed remnant of an old star that is pulling or attracting some of the gases from the red giant to, to itself and it causes some kind of accretion disk. So the gas is causing some kind of disk around the white dwarf and the thing is now more and more gas is accumulating more and more gas um, causes the yeah the, the cloud also to become denser and denser and the temperatures increases especially close to the surface of the white dwarf and at some point when you have the right conditions something happens that you see in our in the inner part of our star namely nuclear fusion and nuclear fusion is then um, caused by all the hydrogen and we have a lot of energy released and then also a very bright event happens and so on. So this is a very basic description of what happens when we have something called a nova. Now let's fetch back to me. And I would suggest before we compute something in Python to see where the star really is, I would suggest we go first to Stellarium because maybe some of you are not that deep into coding and would like to know where the star is. So I would suggest we go to Stellarium, but worry not, this is part of the compressed Cosmos series. So even if you are a beginner in Python, the code I will show you later on is completely beginner user friendly and you don't need to install anything but having an account for Google Colab. So let's switch to Stellarium. Now this is Stellarium. Maybe you know it, it's an open source planetarium software. I already used it in my past previous videos and yeah, I wouldn't make now a very large introduction, I would go straight directly to the star T Corione Borealis or the Blaze Star. Now before we can identify or search for the Blaze Star that you will search here in the search window, we need to download some star catalogs because the point is that per default not all, let's say all stars are downloaded, whatever all stars means, but there are a lot of catalogs and they are kind of huge also, so Stellarium per default does not download all the things. Now what you need to do is you go to the configuration window first, we go here to the extras and there you see the star catalog updates. Now you see I almost I downloaded almost all stars um, up to the seventh catalog, so the eighth and nine is missing on my computer, but that's not a problem. These are very, very faint stars. Um, magnitude of 15 means that they are, well, very, very faint. And But if you download everything to the seventh catalog, you should be fine because what you can do then is search for T. Corione Borealis. But before we do this, I would suggest to, oops, this is the wrong window. I would suggest to open the date time window and go to the evening. So when is the, yeah, the sun setting here? Okay, it's, it goes away now. 
we can then also turn on also the constellations a little bit and also the labels. And now I would suggest to go to the search window. And yeah, it's already part of my um, search history TCRB, but you can also write down T Corione Borealis, I think. Well, unfortunately, it, this does not work. We have to use the star catalog description TCRB. So this is like, this needs to be known, let's say. So let's click on it and it moves well, a little bit slowly, only eight FPS, I don't know what's going on. But here you see the star Coriona, T Coriona Bore, uh, Corona Borealis. So the constellation itself is the Corona Borealis and you see it looks like a crown. I think when we turn on the um, constellation art, then there should also be some kind of crown here. Yeah. So where do you see it? You see we have now here around uh, if you, one hour after midnight, two hours after midnight, and we are looking here to the west. And I think the most distinct or very distinguishable um, constellations are, of course, the Ursa Minor or also Lyra with the Vega star. Um, maybe I would suggest to make a separate video to support you um, orienting in the night sky, but you can also download then uh, some corresponding apps or so, or the maps that we are computing with Python today, because it would be kind of interesting to see how can we compute the position of this star. And for this, I would say, let's go to my GitHub repository, see where the code is, and then let's go. Well, let's start with the Python coding. And here we are in my GitHub repository called Astronize YouTube Tutorials. Where's the mouse? There it is. Um, the link is in the description. So open the repository, go here in the directory of Compressed Cosmos, and there you see the script Compressed Cosmos the Blaze Star. Now, if you watch the video in a few weeks or months, there we will be potentially way more Jupyter Notebooks, so you have to search for it. But let's click here on the Blaze Star. The script is being loaded and we can click here on the small patch that says open in Colab. Now, um, I would suggest to quickly install uh, the missing libraries. In the meantime, I can talk a little bit. Um, we have, ah, I already spin up the instance, so it is already installed. Anyway, we have like uh, three different libraries we are using in today's session, namely the sky field. I talked about this in a little bit in the past, where you can compute um, positions of comets, of asteroids, and so on, as seen from Earth with some sky coordinates. And as to query and astropy, well, astropy is one of the most sophisticated and extensive astrophysical libraries in Python you can do a lot of things with it, statistics, query for data, get some data catalogs and what have you, and we will use this as well. Um, theoretically, we could do everything with AstroPy or also only with Skyfield, but I wanted to show you a little bit how to mix up all the different libraries to show you that uh, we can simply combine also um, different libraries and their content. Now, anyway, I would suggest we load also now our um, libraries and we, lead, uh, we download the Hipparchos data. Now the Hipparchos data is, um, it will be downloaded into your Google Drive, I assume. It is like a catalog that contains around 120,000 stars from the Hipparchos catalog. Now there are tons of different other catalogs. Um, we will talk about this in the future, but for now let's take only the Hipparchos data set and it looks like this. We have like here the stars, we have here the Hipparchos ID, which is here the index of the pandas data frame. We have the magnitude, which is the, basically the uh, brightness of the star. We have the right ascension and the declination uh, given in degrees and also other information. Now the thing is though that uh, we want to we want to work with the T Corona Borealis star, but we don't see any name, only these this ID. Now just one thing in between. I increased a little bit the font size because some people were complaining last time that's a little bit too small. Um, I hope you can read it now a little bit better. If you say it's still too small for your screens, please let me know so I will increase it or improve it uh, for the next video as well. Now back to topic. Um, we need to identify or find the T. Corione Borealis star. And of course, these are not all known stars, but of course, small spoiler alert, the star is in this catalog, otherwise it would be quite, yeah, useless to load the data. Anyway, we use the so-called Simbad web service. Yeah, so in this Simbad web service, there's like a huge database with a lot of different, um, with all the star information from the from, from Simbad. 
And there we can search also for different IDs and then we can query for objects with their, let's say, actual name, like you see here in line six, the so-called T Corione Borealis star. Yeah, so we make here, we connect to the Zimbat, we add the field of, uh, the we add the ID field that we need and then we make the query uh, to Zimbat with the name T Corione Borealis, we get a result table. And the result table, um, from the result table, we extract the Hipparchos ID in this small regex thingy. Now, before I explain it, let's have a look maybe at the um, ID about uh, in the table and the ID column. The thing is we have here in our small description, uh, T. Corione Borealis and all its IDs from different catalogs. So you see here HD 143454. We have something called BD plus 262765. Everything is separated with this pipe. We have here D0, 153, blah, blah, blah. So a lot of different catalogs and IDs. So you, th you get the idea that there are tons of catalogs out there. It's really crazy in astrophysics, like how many catalogs are out there and it's not so, let's say, normalized or unified as you may think. Now, if we look here closely, we see here the Hipparchos ID, HIP78322. Now, instead of just, yeah, making a hard copy of it, I created the small regex, yeah? So we have here a regex that goes into this um, string and it searches for uh, the string that starts with HIP and it extracts the digits out of this part of the string. So in this case, it should extract this number 78322. And you see here in the small print statement that we have 78322 extracted. Now we have this ID now stored in the value TCRB. And then we can go to our next script where we plot everything basically. Yeah, We are loading sky field. So we use sky field, we use also our current time, and then we are also um, loading all constellation information so that we draw some fun fancy nice lines like you saw it previously in Stellarium. We uh, compute the edges between the stars, so the lines, so that we can connect all these things. And here in this section 26 to uh, 38, we extract the information of T. Corione Borealis. So what we do is, we um, we take the uh, star. Oh wait, I think I'm I skipped a thing, right? Ah, yeah, of course. Here, of course, in this cell, I don't only have the ID. I also extracted T. Corione Borealis from my data frame, so we have it already here. So here, this is the line with the right ascension and declination of the star, and this information is being used in this part of the script where we use the sky field API where we can then compute the apparent magnitude, um, right ascension and declination, which is, let's say, a little bit useless because we know it from the database, but we use this part here to center our plot. So our plot we create, and independent of the field of view, T. Corione Borealis is in the very center of the plot, which means that if we want to plot the star, we have to make the a scatter plot with the coordinates 0, 0, and then with a small marker to um, show where it is. So this is a little bit, let's say, uh, easier uh, also to handle for plotting purposes because you know that the star is now in the very center of our plot. So yeah, theoretically, we could skip this a little bit, but um, if you have here, for example, another star or also a comet and a comet is moving in the, in the sky, then we can uh, use the script here as well. So this is not, not special for TCRB. It's also applicable to any other objects, also the ISS, or if you want to observe some, some other satellites or something like that. Now we set also some kind of field of view and I set the limiting magnitude of 6.5, which is like the limiting magnitude uh, of the stars that are um, visible to the naked eye in a very, very dark area. So in a desert or so where you have no light pollution, you can s and your eyes are adapting to it, which takes around 15 to 25 minutes, then you can see these stars. Um, yeah, what we do now is we also compute the positions um, for the remaining stars as well. Everything with respect to the zero, zero coordinates. We do, some, do then some um, 
scaling of the marker size because uh, with, the, with a smaller magnitude corresponds to a brighter star. So I want the markers to a little bit be a little bit larger. And then we do use matplotlib to plot all the information. We use the add collection part with line collection to draw the constellation lines and then the scatter part for um, the stars and then also the coordinate 00 for Corione Borealis. Now these are the things we are using and now I would suggest to go to the very yeah, first of all, we have to execute the script, of course, and then we get the resulting plot of it. So you see here the small green um, line, it goes through, and then we get a plot at the very bottom. And now you're wondering, wait a second, why is it red? Well, this is something now very nerdy, let's say. If you want to, uh, t um, if you want to have your eyes adapted to the night sky, so you, uh, you you see a lot of stars and so on, but you turn on the flashlight or something like that, or your screen of your phone, the adaption is, is gone within seconds. So you have to wait again, like 15, 20 minutes or so. Um, and that's the reason why all hobby astronomers use everything in a red light mode, because red light is affecting the uh, adaption less severely so you can look at the red light stuff and so on but your eye is still adapted to the night sky that's why also these kind of sky maps are then in uh, in red so this is like a small feature i just wanted to integrate here and now if you recall the stellarium uh, script you see here this is also the position of corona borealis and here we see it and i scaled it also with the um a little bit of the brightness here. So we see here the brighter stars here in this Corona Borealis um, constellation. And maybe in a few weeks or months, we have measurement data and we can compute the light profile of the star. So let's cross fingers that the Nova will appear and let's see how our next video of the light curve will look like. So stay tuned and don't miss the chances to see this thing.